our service today, and today we're going to get it in. Y'all know when I got the studio audience, we're going to get it in. We got the, when we get the studio audience in here, we're going to... I was telling Pastor Kevin, I was like, who knew that we were going to have to be a television production studio? Like, I just wanted to, like, teach people about Jesus. You know, I just wanted to say, open your Bibles to 1 Samuel 18. In fact, open your Bibles to 1 Samuel 18. But I just wanted to say, turn your Bibles to 1 Samuel chapter 18, and I wanted to start preaching. But um, the Bible says, Paul said it like this. He said, I became all things. I became all things to all men so that somebody might be saved. I became all, look at somebody and say, I, I, I can be all things. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And so I'm, oh, y'all not helping me this morning. I, just, uh, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Now, I need you to understand this because sometimes you're going to have to be something different. You're going to have to do something different. God's going to give you a new assignment. Don't get so caught up. Oh, Jesus. Don't get so caught up with purpose that you miss assignment. I want you to understand this. Don't get so caught up with purpose that you miss assignment. Because your assignments will lead you to your purpose. Oh, man. Your assignments will lead you to your purpose. See, see, see. David's purpose was to kill Goliath. But his assignment was that basket of bread and cheese that his daddy told him to take out to his brothers. And if you don't know the whole story, you'll be looking for Goliath but missing the cheese. You'll be looking for Goliath but missing the assignments that'll get you on the battlefield. Y'all not helping me today. You'll be looking for Goliath but it, there's an assignment. Lord Jesus, there's an assignment that'll get you on the battlefield. And I think this season, I, I, I don't want to cast dispersions, but I think this season is a season of assignment. God's not absent. COVID didn't show up and God said, I'll be right back. <laughs> God's not absent. He goes, there go COVID, I'll, I'll be right back. No, that's not how it works. God is present for the whole thing. And if God has shifted your life, mm, y'all hear me, if God has shifted your life around, it's because there is purpose connected to that assignment. Oh, man. It is because there's purpose connected to the shift. Look at somebody and say, there's purpose connected to my shift. I need you to type that in the chat. There's purpose connected to my shift. There's purpose connected to my shift. So I got to figure out what my, what my purpose is. And it's in the assignment that God has given me. And if you're here today, thank you, Jesus, you are assigned to this place. So I'm so grateful that you are assigned to be with us today. I'm so grateful that you are assigned to, to jump on the God Chasers Community Church today. And today we're going to talk about something great. We're going to talk about soul ties. Somebody say soul ties. We're going to talk about soul ties. Now, what is a soul tie, Pastor Dante? Well, a soul tie is a phenomenon of Christian experience, a phenomenon of Christian experience that we have created to define entangled relationships. A soul tie, I worked on this definition, Carrie. A soul tie is a phenomenon in Christian uh, in, in Christendom that we have used to define entanglements, entangled relationships. Now, I want to say this again. We are, we are taking the definition of an entanglement back. An entanglement is a complicated relationship. That's all it is. An entanglement is not you cheating on your husband. I just had to pause right there. And say, That's not an entanglement. That's adultery. <laughs> that's not an entanglement that's adultery okay <laughs> okay so I want to be clear but an entanglement is a complicated relationship now if anybody who's been in a relationship raise your hand was it complicated yes okay you all been in an entanglement there you go <laughs> Here, let me help you Jada Pinkett wasn't the only one you all been in entanglements as well every most relationships are complicated most relationships, whenever, especially when it had to do with two people, two people coming together, bringing their lives together, two people who was raised in different houses by different people, two people raised in different cultures, some people who went to church or connected with a person who didn't go to church. This, is, this gets entangled real quick. <laughs> 
But the idea, hear me right here, the idea of a soul tie is just that. It's that my soul has been tied or knit to a certain person. I want to read 1 Samuel uh, chapter 18, and then I want to I, I want to get into this because I'm going to give you some revelation today, and then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let you go. Okay, here we go. 1 Samuel chapter 18, verse 1. 1 Samuel chapter 18, verse 1, it says this. Now it came to pass. When he had finished speaking to Saul, okay, we're talking about David, right? We're talking about David, okay? We're talking about David. He already killed Goliath, okay? And he's moving into the, oh, hear me right here, man. See, chapter 18 is the season where you move into the place where you were supposed to be all along. I should have gave you that introduction. Chapter 18, chapter 17 is where you have to fight. Woo! Listen, and some of y'all are coming out of your chapter 17, and, and, and mm-hmm, you're coming out of your chapter 17, and you're moving into your chapter 18, but the skills required in chapter 17 are useless in chapter 18. See, see when you get in the palace, you don't need your slingshot. When you get in the palace, and that's the problem with some of us. Some of you have been promoted to the palace, but you're still fighting like you're in chapter 17. You've been promoted. You got, you got promoted on your job, but you still talk like you talked when you made minimum wage. Oh, y'all not hearing me. You got promoted. You, oh, yo, you got a new boo. But you still, you treat him or her like they your old boo. And you haven't recognized how to move from chapter 17 into chapter 8. You're not going to have to fight like you did. You're not going to have to shout like you did. You might be able to have a conversation and say, hey, um, just explain to me why you did that. What the, that thing. Remember when she said, remember when she had said, <laughs> some of y'all are like, uh-uh, you just like, I got, a, I got a problem. As our church grows, the names that I can use, are, yeah, I can't talk about, uh, and the more we grow, I wanted to say Rick so bad just now, but I can't use Rick because Rick is holy. That's a, maybe the old Rick. <laughs> May, it's Rick with a K, that's what it, Rick with a K, that's Rick with a C. You just like, you just, see Dante, you just like Rick. I didn't even know Rick. Truth is, I'm totally different from Rick. But what happens is, if you don't, if you don't, if you go into chapter 18 with a chapter 17 mentality, you might miss your blessing. You got to learn to put your slingshot down, David. Oh, I'm helping somebody today. You got to learn to put your slingshot down, David, so that you can be blessed in this new chapter in your life. And you're going to have to learn to trust people. You're going to have to learn. I'm, I want to deal with this. I'm getting deep already. I, I want to deal with this. You're going to have to learn to trust people. Why? Because God uses people to define your purpose. There will always be a breadcrumb trail of people leading you to your purpose. Oh, man. There will always be. What are you talking about, Pastor Dante? Just pay attention. God uses people to he'll, he'll, he'll move you to this place. And then he'll move you to this place. And then he'll use people. Look, he'll, he'll grow you up. Oh, Jesus. Those are, ones, those are the ones you don't like right there. The people that grow you up. <laughs> Sheila. We don't got no Sheilas, I don't think. Sheila at your job. Sheila will grow you up because Sheila's still in chapter 17. <laughs> and she, Sheila, I know you ain't talking to me like that. <laughs> and you be like, Sheila, we work in a corporate environment, sweetie, and I'm going to need you to get calm down. Because I can get ghetto too. <laughs> see, see. <laughs> Sheila, I am from the hood. Like motor engines and carburetors. Don't play with me. <laughs> but you'll be saying it in your chapter 18 voice. <laughs> Sheila, I'd like you to understand that if you want to have this conversation, we can have it. <laughs> <laughs> this is the issue when you haven't, listen, when you haven't moved into your new place. God uses those people to grow you up, to define you. Does that make sense? Okay, so now David has moved from chapter 17 into chapter 18, and now he's being defined in a new way. And it says it came to pass. Mm, I, I wish I could stay right there. Something's going to come to pass. 
It's happening now, but it's going to come to pass. It's a, you're dealing with it now, it's going to come to pass, okay? Now it came to pass when he had finished speaking to Saul that the soul of Jonathan was knit to the soul of David. The soul of Jonathan was knit to the soul of David. And Jonathan loved David as he loved his own self. Are y'all with me? Are y'all with me? And then it says this, that Saul took him that day and did not let him return to his father's house. Then Jonathan made a covenant with David. Lord have mercy. Thank you, Jesus. Because he loved him as himself. And Jonathan stripped off his own stuff. He stripped of himself the robe that was on him and he gave it to David with his armor, including his sword and his bow and his belt. Lord have mercy, man. I wish I had time to break that all down. And so David went out, and wherever Saul sent him, he prospered. And Saul sent him over the men of war, and it was pleasing in the sight of all people and also in the sight of Saul's servants. Okay, now, who are we talking about? Well, David. David fought Goliath. Y'all remember this story, right? He went out there. He had a slingshot. Boom, 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 boom. He swung it. Bang. Goliath's dead. Okay. Goliath's on the ground. G David cuts Goliath's head off, and he holds it up, and he gives it back to the king. The king is Saul. Are y'all with me today? I just had to give y'all that little Bible study so y'all understand where we are. Now, David is, because he killed Goliath, there was some, mm, 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 thank you, Jesus. There was some things that you got because of what you defeated in the last season. There were some promises made. Lord Jesus, do you know you serve a God who keeps his promises to you? There were some promises that God made to you in the last season, and when you defeat this thing, mm, when you defeat this thing you're going through, not COVID, COVID is, is, is its own thing. When you defeat whatever you're going through, when you defeat your current assignment, God says, then I, I will give you what I promised you, which one of those promises was to move into the palace. You got to move into the palace. And when he moved into the palace, he met Saul's son. Saul is the king. His son is a king in training because there are no such thing as princes. Right? We discovered that, right? There are no such thing as princes. There are kings in training. <laughs> and so, and, and he meets, David meets Jonathan, and they become best friends. And the Bible says their souls were knit together. And from that story, we get the pretext of what we call soul ties. From that story, we get the pretext, well, PD, that's a good story. Yeah, it's a great story. So why are soul ties have such a bad connotation? If we, it came from a good story, their souls were knit together. Their hearts were knit together. Then why does it have such a bad connotation? Well, because you can be soul tied to a toxic thing. It's not the tie that's toxic. <laughs> It's the thing that's toxic. And what happened is you tied yourself to something toxic, and now you got to deal with the toxicity. Mm. And that, that right there, even when you cut the tie, you cut the relationship. Well, let me say it like this. Even when you cut the relationship, you keep the tie. You keep the residue. Of what happened. So now, that, let, me, let me give you another example from the New Testament. Paul refers to this thing called the body of death. The body of death. What's that mean, Pastor Dante? Well, uh, as a punishment for you murdering somebody, as a punishment for something you did to somebody, they would tie a dead person to you. They just rope them to you. They just rope them to you. You, you know, some of y'all so hood, y'all like, I would have just took it off. Then you die. They kill you. I, I just deal with this rope. <laughs> I just stay roped to this thing. Oh, you're going to take my head. Okay, I'll, I'll keep this rope on. So, <laughs> so they stay roped to the thing. But the, the, what happens is dead things attract. Mm, dead things attract dead things. Dead things attract dirty things. Dead things attract disease. Dead things attract vultures. Snakes, worms, they, they, these, these bottom feeders. Oh, man, I'm, I'm trying to help y'all. Some of y'all just cleared your Rolodex right there. You ain't seen nothing but snakes, worms, bottom feeders. 
<laughs> rodents, all these things that eat dead things. And they're attracted. They, they're attracted to that thing. They're attracted to that. And they follow you. And they follow you. And so you got the, you're not only dragging the dead body, but you're dragging all of the things that come along with it. This is a dangerous soul tie. This is a dangerous soul tie. You know why, Pastor? It's not so much the animals. You can deal with the animals. Just type that in the chat. I can deal with the animals. It's the dis-ease. See, that's what disease is. Dis-ease. Janelle, that's what disease is. It's dis-ease. It's discomfort. And as you drag along that dead thing, the dis-ease that was on it gets on you. All of a sudden, this whole side of your body just starts to rot. Start to get sickness and disease and, pu and pus. And then eventually, I'm sorry if it got dark. That's true. Eventually, you'll die. You'll die from the dis-ease of carrying that dead thing. And some of y'all, that's been your relationships. That's been your relationships. Now, imagine, imagine after carrying that thing for a year or two or three or five, or seven, or 10, or 18 years, you're carrying a dead thing. You're carrying a dead thing. All of a sudden, that death will be on you. Now, let's say, Pastor Tab, let's just say, for some reason, you know, they let you go, and you were freed. You will still have the remnants the sores, the bruises, the pain, the ugliness from that dead thing. You would still have it. It would still be on you. This is what a soul tie looks like in Christendom. Now, when I tie myself to something good, he going to come over here and come and carry. Tie myself to something good. When I tie myself to something good, good things happen. I'm blessed. Highly favored. Man, I put this on the wrong hand. By the time I get over there, I'm going to choke Tiffany. Uh, <laughs> come here. Come here. <laughs> when I'm tied to something good, good things happen. Right? Does that make sense? If I'm tied to something good, good things happen. And I can deal with the good things that are happening in my life. And it's, I'm blessed. So it's okay that I'm tied to it because good things happen. When I tie myself to something bad, uh, I'm going to come over here to LT. It's not that she's she just representing something bad today. She's not bad. She's, she's wonderful. Amen. When I tie myself to something bad, bad things happen. And so I got to be careful about what I'm tied to. I got to be careful about what I'm connected to. And that's my whole message for today. Be careful. Be careful about what you are connected to. So say that. Be careful about what you are connected to. Proverbs 22, 24 just says this. It says this. Proverbs 22 and 24 says, do not make friends with an angry man. Proverbs, some translations say it's not angry. It's, it's well, it's angry. It's, it's a mad man. A crazy man. Look, I'm killing y'all Rolodex right now. Yeah, because he mad. <laughs> Rodents, snakes, mad men. I got to scratch all this off. Because if I get connected, the Bible says, do not get connected with an angry man and do not associate with, high, with a hot-tempered person. Or you may learn their ways and entangle yourself with a snare. What's that mean, Pastor Dante? It means they're going to trip you up. It used to be cute that she had an attitude. It used to be cute that she had, a, that she had this. But now y'all starting to get serious about each other. And that ain't cute no more. You say, you say, I don't want to be entangled. Oh, Lord Jesus. I don't want to be wrapped up with somebody who don't like me, with somebody who's not like me, with somebody who's not going the same direction as I'm going. Do me a favor, Carrie. Get up real quick. I, I want to make an example really quick. Just stand up on your feet. I know it's going to be hard to get back up in that chair. I'm sorry. But it, it, I'm just... This wasn't a... Let's go. <laughs> Anywho... Look at this. Look, I'm under the chair. I'm under the chair. Okay. If you tie to someone who is going the same direction as you, it's all good. 
Be careful. Me and Carrie, we're going to step on, on three. We're going to step with our left foot. One, two, three, step. Look at our rope. It's, it's moving. One, two, three, step. One, two, three, step. Okay, don't step off the stage because we don't got no insurance. Okay. <laughs> As we're going in the same direction, it's no problem until I realize I'm tied to somebody who's not, who's not going Oh, Jesus, who's not going in the same direction I'm going. And Carrie, Carrie still wants to step. She still wants to further our relationship, but I'm stuck between two places. I'm stuck between somebody, oh, who never been where I'm supposed to go and somebody who's supposed to go where I'm supposed to go. And until I learn how to break that soul tie, I'm going to be stuck in one place, stuck between my future and my past. Stuck between my destruction and my destiny. I'm, I'm stuck. Thank you, Carrie. I'm stuck. And that's how most of us are. We're, we're stuck. We're stuck between two things. We're stuck between two places. And if you don't learn how to get unstuck, that's why you're sad. That's why you're mad. That's why you're angry at yourself. You're looking at your life and saying, no, no, we stuck. I'm stuck. And the truth is, you're not stuck. You're tied to something that's got you stuck. I want to be clear about something. There, there are, I can't spend a lot of time on this, um, and, I, and I'm not a therapist, so you probably got to go to your therapist and figure this out. But there are narcissists and empaths. Narcissists and empaths. Narcissists and empaths. See, my tie won't even let me go to the part of the stage I want to go on. Look at this. You see, this is what happens when you get tied up. You can't even go where you want to go. Oh, Lord, have mercy, Jesus. Whew, I feel like I helped somebody just now. But there are narcissists and empaths. See, empaths care about others. Narcissists care about themselves. So the relationship between a narcissist and an empath usually works really well because you want to care about them and they want you to care about them. You need to care about them. That's the kind of person you are. An empath, look, everybody on the chat going to be empaths. An empath is so caring, so compassionate, that they actually need, they define their relationships by giving. They define their relationships by what they give to people, what they sow into them. And then because of that reason, because of that reason, uh, empaths can be patient. Because they define their seasons by seed. And they'll still say, no, something's going to grow. I sold too much into that relationship. Something's got to grow. I sold too much into that relationship. Something's got to grow. But a, but a narcissist is not good ground. A narcissist is a chameleon. A narcissist will show you grass where there's no fruit. It's like the fig tree. You'll show up to it, and then it'll be the season for fruit, and you'll see leaves. But nothing that can sustain you. Oh, I'm helping somebody right now. And so you realize you're attached to somebody who can't sustain you. You're attached to somebody who can't feed you. But you're so addicted to feeding them that you'll starve. You're so addicted to feeding them that you'll starve. You got to be careful when you're an empath. You got to be careful what relationships you get in. You got to be careful when this is your motive, when you want to just love people and give to people and give to people and give to people. You got to be careful where you sow. It's so important because what will happen is you'll get into another relationship with, with, a, with somebody, oh, hear me, who, whose sole goal is to keep you giving. I can just keep you giving. I'll only do enough to keep you giving. I'll only do enough to keep you giving. Sure, I'll buy you a flower to keep you giving. Sure, I'll tell you you're beautiful to keep you giving. Sure, I'll say I love you to keep you giving. I don't really love you because love gives, but God so loved the world that he gave, and we define love by giving, and you cannot define love outside of the way God defined it, which looks like, what have you done for me late? I want to say lately. Is that too? Lately. Seven words. 
What have you done for me lately? This is how God said. He said, for, for you said, I love the world so much that I gave. Now it's your turn. But a narcissist only knows how to take. Doesn't know how to give. So you got to be careful who you connect yourself to. You got to be careful who you connect. Hi, Tiff. Hey there. Good ground. Good ground. You got to be careful who you connect. Oh, my rope broke. Well, it, it wasn't meant to be. <laughs> come on, come on. Let's see, let's see if this rope will stand. You got to be careful who you connected to. You got to be careful who you connected to. Now, see, I wanted to give this example because, and you know, I'm done. I wanted to give this example because some of y'all been connected to too many people. And you keep sowing into, into so many people. You got so many connections. You've sown into so many people that, that, that you, have, uh, you have emptied yourself. And that's why you're not even a good friend no more. Because you've emptied yourself in so many relationships. You can't be a good steward at church because you've emptied yourself. into. And the truth is, I don't trust anybody no more. The truth is, I, I, I don't trust everybody lying. Everybody's a savage. Everybody's doing me wrong. And, and you, get, you, develop, you develop this coarseness. And this is what God wants to do. He wants to break up the follow ground of your heart because you've developed these walls that you put up. And I said this before, the walls that you keep people out, be careful that they don't become the walls that keep you in. Now you're stuck. Now you're stuck. You had good friendships, but you don't know what happens. Now you're stuck. You had good relationships, but you don't know what happens. And now you're stuck. See, what happens is this. Oh, hear me right here. Matthew 7. Let me get this. Uh, let me give y'all this last couple of scriptures and then get out of here. Matthew 7, 6. Matthew 7, 6 says this. Do not give to dogs what is holy. And do not cast your pearls before swine. If you do, they will trample them under their feet and then turn and tear you to pieces. We always hear that. Do not cast your words, your, your pearls to swine. We don't know what that means. Do not cast your pearls to swine. But I like the first one. Don't, don't give to dogs what's holy. Lord have mercy. Some of y'all need to take a note right here. Don't give to dogs what's holy. Don't give to dogs what's holy. I, I ain't trying to call nobody a, a, a dog, but if he barked like a dog, oh, or she, if she purr like a dog, I don't know what that means. You have to define that. You have to protect what is holy. Oh. Did we talk about this a couple of weeks ago? Protecting what is holy. I have to protect what's holy. I have to protect God has purpose. Oh, Jesus, I'm going to get in trouble right here. God has purpose for your possessions. And you got to protect them. God has purpose for your possessions, and you got to protect them. Don't cast them to dogs. Don't cast them to pigs, because they'll tear you to pieces. And then you'll wonder why you can't love anymore. You'll wonder why you can't serve anymore. You'll wonder why you disconnected from everybody. And it's because you cast your pearls to swine. This is the season, though, I feel like God is calling you back. God is restoring you to a place. Oh, hear me right here. God is restoring you to a place where he's putting the pieces back together. Oh, somebody say God's putting the pieces back together. He's putting the pieces in my life back together. All the pieces that got tore up by the pigs and the dogs and the swine, God's putting the pieces back together. But I got to let him. I got to trust him. See, we talked about yokes. Remember, we talked about being equally yoked. This is something I need y'all to understand because this is not just about sinners and saints. Sometimes it's about um, oxes and jackasses. See, an ox is not meant to tread with a jackass. I'm going to get a donkey. Donkey. Somebody, I felt the judgment coming through the camera. <laughs> There, there is an ox, and an ox pulls at a certain speed. Now, 
the, the, <laughs> the donkey pulls faster than the ox. So it looks like it's doing more work. But the ox can cover more ground. Y'all not hearing me? The ox can cover more ground. It can pull more weight. So even there's been some people in your life that move faster than you. Mm, they move quicker than you, but they didn't understand that you're an ox. You see, you're built to you're built to move at a certain pace. You're built to move at a certain speed. And what I'm telling you is that when you tie a donkey to an ox, you get circles. All of a sudden, you're going in circles. And you wonder what's happening to your relationship. It's, it's going in circles. Every time I try to turn, I don't think I'm going to be able to. <laughs> this is, am I going to be tangled? I'm going to be, I got to come back. I think, I, no, no, no. It's what happens when you unequally yoked. When you're not, you try to, when I can't, I don't. Now notice, notice that they are in the same position they were, but I'm more restricted. Notice they don't, they don't feel a thing. It's not a, it's nothing. It's nothing to them. But I'm, I'm more, re- something happened. I got, I got, wait, I can't figure I got to figure out how to, because now I'm stuck. Now I'm stuck. I broke up with them 10 years ago, but I'm still, our relationship been over. I've been left that job. I still, I'm still dealing with the residue of the dead thing that I was dragging dead people and dead conversations and I'm still dealing with the residue of it and I want to be free and Jesus says here I am I'm coming to 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 break up the pieces but before we get to it I I I just want to I want to give you a couple of notes let me give you these quick quick notes write this down write this down I'm only going to give you two write this down soul ties are bounds without boundaries Soul ties are bonds, excuse me, without boundaries. See, once I give somebody access to me, when I give somebody access to me, it, it, it can be a good thing if they know how to deal with those boundaries, if they know how to properly put up boundaries. But I got to understand, when I give somebody full access to me, I took away the boundaries. When I tied myself to somebody, so now I'm, 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 I'm in chains, and, 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 and the closer I get to you, <laughs> all of a sudden there's no boundaries. That's why you can call me any time of night, any ungodly time, send me a text, W-I-D. If you're older than 30, it don't matter. <laughs> And you think you have to respond. You think you have to. Because the boundaries are broken. To somebody you don't even date no more. You think you have to. You think you owe them a response. I had to get free from some things. Let me hear me right here. I had to get free from the people in this city. Lord have mercy. I'm going to get in trouble right here. I thought just because they were my Facebook friend that they could have instant access to me. And that they can send me any message anytime, and I had to respond. Oh no, because I serve the people, right? Well, I serve God. But I, I don't want you to get into a place where you feel like there's no boundaries between you and another person. You got to learn how to set up the boundaries. Okay, so the second thing is, real quick, soul ties are the chains of collusion and confusion. Collusion and confusion. If our relationship is confusing, oh Jesus, then this tie gonna make it more confusing. The more I stay in it, the more confusing it's gonna get. Because that's what soul ties do. They 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 are the chains of confusion, but they're also the chains of collusion. What's that mean? If they did it, you did it. PD. If they did it, you did it. If they slept with them, you slept. They lied, you lied. If they were dishonest, ask the IRS. 
I'm tied to this person. Okay. You, you colluding with this person. Whatever law they break, holy or unholy, you broke it too. Because that's what soul ties do. It ties you to a person. And then you won't even be able to see them as guilty anymore. You'll say, oh, no, no. No, no, he didn't mean to do it. She, she, she didn't mean to do it. It was an accident. Everybody, that's how you, sometimes, you, you want the, the number one indicator that you're in a soul tie? Let me help you right here. You ain't going to like this. You ain't going to like this. People who loved you in a past season are warning you today. People who loved you in a past season. I ain't talking about some arbitrary people. I'm talking about people who was with you. They're not just jealous. You tied to that thing. People who loved you and cared about you are saying, yeah, hey, you okay? You, you, you're different. You're like, nah, y'all just jealous of us. No, no, no. No, no, no. Be careful that you're not in the soul time. Pastor Dante, what, what's that? What's, what do I do now? Now that I'm in the soul time. Well, you, you're going to have to start building. Uh, uh, we talk about replacement theology. <laughs> See, see, I teach folk that you can't just quit cigarettes. You got to replace them with something. You got to chew gum now. And just like you used to keep a pack of cigarettes, you got to keep a pack of gum. And every time you want a cigarette, you got to chew some gum. That's replacement theology. Replacement th theology. It's called expitiation. If you want a Greek word for it, it's this. It's that we owed God something for our sins. Lord have mercy. We owed God something for our sins. There was something that we owed God that we had to pay. We had to pay. The wages of sin is death and we had to pay. We had something was supposed to die. Thank you Jesus. Something was supposed to die. See when you're connected to toxic people, when you're connected to toxic things, you're dying. This is the rule. Something has to die. You don't realize it. But look around, you're dying. When you still have that toxicity on you, when you carry in toxic people for years. Oh, we just, I don't want to complicate our relationship. It's already complicated. Nobody can define who y'all are. It's already complicated. Then God says there has to be some substitution for this toxicity. There has to be some substitution. And so we had sin. We had so much sin that it was, it, was, it was killing us. The body of death was killing us. We had this sin that was killing us. And, and Jesus comes in as the substitute, as the holy sanctified chewing gum, as a replacement for what we should have done, uh, as a replacement for what should have happened to us. Jesus was the replacement for it. He died so you didn't have to. So in order to break a soul tie, there has to be a replacement theology. You're going to have to replace that, that bad tie with some good ties. That bad relationship with some good relationships. That bad situation with some better situations. And you say, Pastor Dante, I want to break it. I want to break it, but I don't know how to, to actually break the chains, the ties that, that got me bound, that's got me uh, fettered up to this person. And, and what I want you to know is that the anointing breaks the yoke. It is the anointing that breaks the tie. And so what you need is a holy anointing. And as you pray for God, you say, God, anoint me so that I can break this relationship. Anoint me so I can break this. Anoint me so I can break this relationship. And then all of a sudden, the anointing shows up. All of a sudden, the anointing shows up. All of a sudden, the anointing. And the Bible says that the anointing breaks the yoke. In fact, it says the word of God is sharper than two edges. Lord have mercy. The word of God is sharper than two edges. And all of a sudden, when I get the anointing, it's going to be complicated. I'm, I'm here to help you. It's going to be difficult, but you're going to have to figure out how to break the chains of the thing that had you bound. It's going to be hard, but you're going to have to... You're going to have to figure out how to break the chains so that you can be free again, so that you can dance again, so that you can walk again, so that you can, help me, help me, so that you can fall in love again. So that you can fall in love again. 
you got to break the bad ties so that you can get the new ties. And the Bible says it is the anointing. This is in Isaiah. The Bible says the anointing destroys the yoke of bondage. Listen, I'm praying for the anointing over your life so you can break, so you can break, so you can break. I want to give another, so you can break. I want to, I want to, you know, as we get these demonstrations, it's not my fault that I think of good stuff, right? No, no, no. Right before I have to preach. At 9.30 this morning, I was like, Latwana, <laughs> I got this rope. <laughs> I want to make this example. But as I was testing it out, because you got to R&D this stuff. You don't, you don't try it for the first time on, on the stage. That's how you become YouTube famous. <laughs> as I was r and in it, I went to cut the rope. And I just tried to, you know, right tab it, and it wouldn't cut. I tried to, it wouldn't cut. And I heard the spirit of the Lord say, sometimes you gotta get violent. You gotta just you say, I'm done with this. I'm finished with this. I'm not doing this no more. I'm done with this. I'm giving this life away. I'm not doing this anymore. I believe that God has set me free today. I believe, hear me right here. Listen, that's the sound that should be going through your living room right now. That's the sound that should be going through your bedroom right now. The sound of breaking free. That's what it sounds like. Yeah, everybody, we sing, we sing and dance, freedom, freedom, but freedom is violent. Freedom is violent, and it's loud, and it's noisy. And listen, when you're in front of it, it's scary. I don't know what I'm going to do when I'm free. I was watching a movie one time. And uh, it was a slave, and he was talking to um, some slave owner. And the slave owner looked at him, and he said, what are you going to do with freedom? What are you going to do? You want it so bad. What are you going to do with freedom? Some of us have gotten free just to tie ourselves back to something toxic. Because you only recognize what you recognize. You're familiar with it. And familiarity, hear me right here, familiarity is pulling you back to your old ways, to your old thoughts, to your old relationships. God said, no, 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 this is the season now. I came to set you free. I came to set you free, daughter. I came to set you free, son. And it's the anointing that breaks the yoke. It's the anointing that breaks the yoke. Yeah, I got to get into some better relationships, some better friendships, but I got to trust the anointing. Now, one more thing. Let me, let me put this down. One more thing. Get this. I'm trying to think in my analogy how to get rid of. I'm sorry. It's not that easy. Some stuff you just got to carry. I was trying to figure out how to get out of, you know, I'll, take the, I'll get into my message and I'll shout and I'll take the, and that, that's not how it works. Sometimes you're going to still see the evidence of that toxic relationship. And I said, God, help me to define this. He said, I did already. He said, I did when, when Jesus was talking to the disciples. He said, I did already when Jesus was talking to the disciples and he said something very simple. He said, take up your cross. <laughs> take up your cross. Take up. See, that sounds cute now because we wear crosses on jewelry. That sounds cute now because we got little crosses all over the place and they're little crosses with little fish on them and they look so beautiful. But the cross, the cross was an instrument of death. It was an instrument of death. And I said, God, 
Why, why, why would I have to take up my cross? Why would I have to, why would I have to deal with, see, see, the problem is, it's not the cross, it's the shame associated with it. When I'm truly free, this is, oh, hear me right here. When I'm truly free, this is ornamental. There's no shame associated with it. It's ornamental. Yeah, I still got it. Yeah, I still deal with it. Yeah, and, and in fact, I still have a little bit of depression about it. I still have a little bit of issues about it. But I'm not bound to it anymore. I'm free from it now. And I can look at this as evidence of my freedom. I can hold it up as evidence. See, the problem is, the problem is not when you have the cross. The problem is when the cross have you. I take up my cross to show that the cross don't have me. I take up my cross. I hold up my chains to show that the cross don't have me. I'm no longer bound anymore. I can hold up my chains and say, look at me. I'm free. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm free. I'm free. And then they took me to Revelation where the Bible says simply, and they overcame him. Who is him? The snake. Well, he was a snake in Genesis. He's a dragon in Revelation. No matter what it is, that's what it used to be. He was a snake when you met him. <laughs> the Bible says they overcame him by the blood of the lamb. And... Uh, I've said this, but I never preached this. I said, I've told you this. I said this, but I'm afraid to preach this. But I'm going to preach it today. And they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and the word of their testimony. Let me help you right here. See, the, the blood alone is wonderful. The blood alone is amazing. The blood alone, it does amazing things. The blood alone, it, it will do wonderful things. But see, if I only have the blood alone, then it's just me and the blood. All of a sudden, when I start holding up my fetters, now I make the blood mobile. So it's not the blood alone. It's the blood and my chains. It's the blood and my testimony. It's the blood and who I used to be. It's the blood and what I used to do. It's the blood and how I used to live. And that's how we overcome. That's how we overcome. By the blood of the Lamb and my chains. By the blood of the Lamb and my fetters. Without shame. I'm not ashamed. I'm free. I'm not ashamed of who I used to be. This is a lifestyle that I used to live. I'm no longer that. I still got some remnants. I still got some remnants. I may even still look a little like who I used to be. But I'm no longer who I used to be. And if you ask me about my chains, I'll tell you about my Christ. You ask me about my chains, I'll tell you about my God. We serve a God that will set you free. Today, if you bound, let me help you right here. The first thing I want you to see is these. Everybody on this stage, intentionally, everybody on this stage still has a piece of rope in their hand. Let me help you. Everybody on this stage still got a little piece of rope in there. I'm free, but I got it. I'm free from it, but I still got it. It don't got me. I wish I could get some people up here to testify about who they used to be, about what they used to do, about how they used to live. Show you, uh, you, you ask me about my chains, I'll tell you about my Christ. Everybody up here still has some rope. Everybody behind this camera is still got some rope. Everybody in this auditorium still got some rope. They still dealing with it. They still dealing with the body of death that they drug. And there is a healing that's coming for you. Hear me right here. There's a healing that come, that's coming for you. 
And I do believe in healing, but I want to let you know some things, some scars you're going to have forever. You've been using these as an excuse to not get right with Christ. You've been using these as an excuse to not get your life back together. The truth is, this is where your failure is because you wasn't supposed to put your life back together anyway. In Matthew 7, it said, he's putting back the pieces. You got to let him do it. You got to let him do it. This is the season now. Come back. Come back. Come back, son. And daughter. He's not afraid of you. He's got, the, he's, he's got the mechanism to cut that soul tie. He's got the mechanism. It's the anointing that breaks the yoke. It's the anointing that breaks the yoke. It's the anointing that breaks the yoke. And you keep running from the anointing, you're going to stay stuck to the soul tie. Some of y'all are tied to inanimate objects. It's dead. It don't even move anymore. He took it all. He not tied to you anymore. You got the rope still. She's not, she not even thinking about you no more. You got the rope still. God said, no, here's the time. The anointing comes to destroy the yoke. God says, give it to me, baby. Give it to me. Turn it over to me. Turn it over to me, son, daughter. Turn it over to me. He says, I'll break you. I'll break you free. Listen, if you don't know Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, if you've never had a relationship with Jesus, I, I want to offer Jesus to you right now. He is the true Son of God. I don't care what religion you've been a part of. I don't care what, I don't care what you've gone through or what you've been through. This, this is the season now where God said, I'll take you in. I'll break your yokes. I'll destroy. The Bible says the anointing destroys the yoke. If you don't know Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, repeat this prayer after me. Just say, Lord Jesus, please forgive me for all my sins. Come into my heart. Change my heart. Come into my life. Change my life. Father, today I accept you as my Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. Now listen, if it's you, you say, I've been, I, I, I was in a soul tie, Pastor Dante. I was in a soul tie. I was wrapped up. I was tied up. I was tangled up. I didn't know how to get out. I still don't know how to get out. I still got the remnants of it. I, I want to re remind you, so do we. But here's the day where you can be free now. No more restrictions. No more bondage. If that's you today, you went away from God. You got caught up. You got tied up. You got tangled up in a relationship that's outside of God. And you want to come back today. I want to I wanna call you back. I want to pray for you to come back. This is the season now. Just say, Father, I want to come home. In Jesus' name, amen. It's that simple. It's that easy. Come back. The prodigal son just decided to come home. You can decide to come home. If you said the, the first prayer for the first time, you accepted Jesus for the first time, I want, I want you to do something for me. You accepted Jesus for the first time, I, I want you to just type the number one in the comments. You say, I'm, come, I, I'm accepting Jesus. I've never had a relationship with him before. Uh, I want to accept him now. Type a number one in the comments. Listen, if you say, I'm coming back home, PD. I've had a relationship outside of God. I had a relationship that pulled me away from God. I had an entanglement that pulled me away from God. But I want to come back home right now. Just type the number two in the comments. And if you are one of these people who say, man, who is this guy? I don't know who he is. But his voice connects with something on the inside of me. I don't know who he is, but something about his voice connects with my spirit. Listen, I want to be your pastor. Virtual, online, I don't care where you live. We all online right now. I want to be your pastor. Listen, I, you need somebody praying with you. You need somebody coaching you. You need somebody helping you. You need somebody who speaks into your life. And you need somebody who calls you out by name before the Father. I want to be that for you. I want to be like I am for these people and so many others. I want to be that for you. 
You need somebody to help you. You need somebody to walk with you through this stuff because it's tough and it's difficult and it's hard. But I'm telling you now, I'll hold your hand. I don't know everything, but I'll tell you everything I know. If that's you today, just type number three to say, I want to be a part of God Chases Community Church. We'll gladly accept you as a part of our church. Listen, we love you. We're praying for you. Let me, I want to say a prayer for everybody who's been bound up in a soul tie. Let me, let me pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I pray right now, God. I, I, I hear chains falling off, shackles and fetters falling off, Lord Jesus, because of this message, God. I believe that you set some people free today, God. I believe that they're going to start to change their life, God. They're going to start to change their ways, God. Lord, I believe in the power of expitiation, God. The power of substitution, God. Where they were broken in one season, they'll be free in another season. Where they were fighting in one chapter, they'll move into their proper position in this next chapter, God. And Lord, I pray that the anointing goes through my phone. Thank you, Jesus. Goes through the phone, through the airwaves, God. Thank you, Jesus. I pray that the anointing can go through the computer, God, and touch them right where they are, God, and set them free. Because you said where the Spirit of the Lord is, there also is liberty. We're free today. We love you. God loves you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God bless you. I'll see you real soon. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Today was such a powerful word on soul ties. Amen. 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 We had such a great illustration that was so practical to apply to our lives. I just want to celebrate. Let's celebrate collectively everyone that became free today. Amen. All of those who became free on today, we are celebrating God with you. Amen. We are celebrating your freedom on today. Amen. We have got some amazing things going on here at God Chasers, and we're so grateful to each and every one of our partners. We are so thankful that even in the midst of all that's going on, we still have faithful partners who are partnering with us financially by giving their tithes and giving their offerings. And if you're watching today and you say, I want to become a financial partner as well at God Chasers because I've seen all that you do for the community. I see how lives are being changed. All you have to do is text any amount to 8 four three two one again you all you have to do is text any amount to eight four three two one or you can use cash app you can go to give to god chasers via cash app or you can go to give.godchasers.cc we are so grateful for each and every one of our financial partners again pastor dante and i thank you for continuing to remain faithful and we pray god pray god's abundant rich blessings over your life amen and also, you can stay connected with us at our e-church. If you're part of our e-church, put some uh, hearts down in the comments. Let us know that you're connected in our e-church. If you're not connected in our e-church, it is very much so a visible place that you can find. Find us on God Chasers on Facebook, and you can come be a part of our e-church community. Also, follow us, amen? Follow us on Facebook. Follow us on Instagram. We have tons of things that go on throughout the week, and we don't want you to miss a thing. So all you have to do is hit those follow buttons to be a part. I just want to say I love you. Pastor Dante loves you. Here at God Chasers, we are celebrating God with you, and we are praying for you. We have intercessors that are praying for you and for your families, and we just ask that until we see each other again, that you stay safe, stay healthy, and stay on the chase. God bless you. We love you. Have a blessed and amazing week.